basically there was this, there's just like this, this feeling of like overwhelm anxiety, like however, you know, people kind of say it, but it's just like, it's all too much. There's too many things going on. Um, I don't really know, you know, it's almost like you're sitting there like, I don't know what to do. I feel like I'm not doing it right. I'm failing. I maybe have tried a whole bunch of stuff, um, whatever it is. And then it's just like, at some point, I feel like we're good at sort of handling it here, you know, little bits and pieces. And then I feel like at one point there's that whole straw that broke the camel's back thing. And next thing you know, it just hits somebody like a ton of bricks. It's happened to me. It's happened to a lot of people. And then you just feel overwhelmed, defeated. There's nothing else that you can do. And like, what do you do? Right. And I think a lot of people on this path go through that, but I think a lot of people just in life go through that too with other things. So, I, you know, as I was talking to this person, I, you know, you know, mean analogies, they just kind of like fly out. Um, so I, I started comparing it to being in quicksand and as I was going through it, I'm like, oh, this, this is kind of hitting for me, I feel like. And then it seemed to hit for the person at the end of the call too. So uh, anyways, that's, that's what I want to do. So if you think of, if you think of being overwhelmed and this feeling that like stuff is all around you and it keeps pulling you in a direction you don't want to go. And the more you fight it, the like harder it is to figure out like all of these feelings that really does feel not that I don't know if any of us actually bid in quicksand, but I've definitely watched Indiana Jones and these other movies and you see what happens. And it's like, you get in there and the more you fight and the more you struggle and the more that you're not focused on how to actually get out of it, the faster and the quicker and the stronger it pulls you down, right? That's always like the lesson I learned as a kid. If you're in quicksand, you stop it like I would ever be in quicksand ever, right? But I learned this lesson as a kid watching these shows. If I'm ever in quicksand, I stop moving so I don't sink as fast. And then you have to focus on trying to get out in a way. Sometimes you could do it yourself. Sometimes there's something you could reach for. You could grab onto like a branch or something or a vine that's dangling over your quicksand in the movie scene and you can pull yourself out and you can do that. Other times you need help to get you that thing, right? So somebody's stuck in the quicksand. They can't, they can't reach, they can't do it on their own. They understand how to do it. They understand that they need to focus on getting out and not going crazy and freaking out in there, but they need help to make that happen, right? And so there's two paths to get out. Those are the two paths. Sometimes as a person, if you can sort of take a break, take a beat, stop, stop fighting, stop moving, stop feeling like you're going to die like that and take a breath and then really focus on like your surroundings and what's going on. Is there a way for me to get out of this? Can I grab onto something? Oh, there is. I can pull myself out if I focus all my energy on the singular motion to get me to a place that I need to be, right? Um, or if you're someone that's always like, listen, I can't, there's, there's nothing for me to get to. I can't do it, but I know that I can, if somebody can help me and I focus on the thing that that person is helping me do, that, that will help me get out of this thing. Right. And, and I think that that silly idea of being in Indiana Jones and like being in the quicksand and getting pulled down, but understanding the path, like how to get out of quicksand, it's similar to all of these things that we're dealing with. At first it's, I feel like mold is chasing me. I can't get away from it. I like everywhere I go, it's there. Then it's, I kind of understand what it is, but now everywhere that I go, I can't find a place without it now, even though I'm aware of it, I can't figure it out. And then it's, oh, I've got a problem in my house. What do I do about it? How do I remediate it? How do I test? What do I do about my stuff? What do I do about my relationships that are getting strained? There's like all of these things that happen. And that is the quicksand in this world that we are talking about here. And so the big thing, like kind of coming out of this conversation that I had with this person, and uh, I've had this talk in different ways. Sometimes I've talked about it as like the light at the end of the tunnel, like there's different things, like analogies that I've used at it, but it's, it's what is the singular thing that's going to stop you from sinking and start pulling you out? That's the first thing that we need to focus on. Okay. You may not get out right away. But the first thing we need to do is stop going, stop sinking down. And the way you stop sinking down is to stop freaking out and creating more movement, which will pull you down. So to instead of the, the reason the overwhelm happens is because we are thinking about all of these possibilities that may or may not happen. And we're thinking about all these things that have happened in the past. And when you put those two things together, it creates like this cyclone and this tornado of like emotions and thought and stress and anxiety. The thing about the past is we can't change it. 
Okay, so if we're looking at like an overwhelmed pie and you've got stuff that's happened in the past, stuff that might happen in the future and stuff that's happening right now, what we need to focus on is what is happening right now in step one. Worrying about everything in the past doesn't help us at this point, right? We can't do anything about it. We've learned from that. We are where we are now. Worrying about what could happen in the future is also not helpful because a lot of times what happens is, is what we've been preparing ourselves to happen in the future never actually happens. And so we end up having like creating this internal stress and like ramp up. And like, I mean, I've done this when I've had to have phone calls with like, uh, like way back when, when you had like direct TV or the cable company and you're like, oh man, you guys charge me where you're supposed to. And then you get on the phone with them and you're on hold for like 20 minutes and the whole 20 minutes, I'm like all ramped up about what this phone call is going to be like. And I'm preparing everything that they could say and what my response is going to be back to it and all of that. And then I get on the call because DirecTV always had very good customer service. I get on the call and I'm ready to just rip into them. And DirecTV is like, yeah, no problem. We'll take care of that. And that's it. I'm like, oh, this big fight that I thought that I was going to have actually did not happen, which means the 20 minutes of stress and struggling and sinking in the quicksand and all of that it was literally for nothing. Right. So it's trying, to dis it's trying to separate ourselves from the past. You learn from the past, but you can't dwell on it because that's going to continue to push you down. It's trying to be somewhat aware of like what's coming in the future, but not so focused on exactly what's happening in the future. Because if we are, we're going to ramp ourselves up. And like I said, 90% of the time, all of the prep that you're doing for the future never actually happens. So you get stressed out for stuff for no reason, right? And really it's focusing on the now and the immediate first thing you do to get to the next thing.